from the Mega Man 3 manual. Calling Mega Man! Calling Mega Man! Come in, please! Mega Man, we need you! We're down on the wire on our peacekeeping project. We've got to get those last energy crystals, or we can't finish it! Dr. Wily is here now, too. Yes, he's... he's finally found his sanity. He knows where the crystals are! They're in the mining worlds, but we can't get to them. The robots are in the muck, and they're destroying everything! You've got to get them, Mega Man, and get those crystals. You'll have to face some pretty mean metal. Expect the worst. Is Rush there with you? Give me both the true arm. Tell him it's from us. What's that? We, we must be getting static. Sounds like you just said wolf. Mega Man, get to those mining worlds pronto. Grab the crystals and stop whoever's in charge. It must be one lunatic guy. This is Dr. Light. Over and out. Welcome to Let's Play Mega Man 3. Oh, I'm so excited to get into this one. This is my favorite one. We have to get through 1 and 2 first, but this is my absolute favorite Mega Man game. This is the one that I always go back and play the most. This is the one that I think personally has the best music. This is the one that I got some problems with it, just like with Mega Man 2. But the good of this game definitely outweighs the bad, and I'm just, oh, I'm just so excited to get into this one favorite one in the entire series. Well, maybe not the entire franchise, but definitely in the classic series, this is my favorite one. In the entire franchise, there's, there's a couple of other games that I like a little bit better, but this one's pretty great. Anyway, there's uh, no story in the beginning of Mega Man 3, so I had to add that back in from the Mega Man 3 manual, but moving on, we got our eight Robot Masters, we know how this works. Snake Man, Needle Man, Top Man, Shadow Man, Magnet Man, Gemini Man, Hard Man, really? And Spark Man. Anyway, we know how this works. Eight Robot Masters. We're Mega Man. There's no villain, apparently, yet. So, you know, just us in the middle. So, let's move on. Our first Robot Master is going to be Top Man. Before I tell you his bio, we're going to cover a couple of brand new things introduced in Mega Man 3. First of all, the sliding. We get to go faster, we look a little bit cooler, and we get into some hard to reach places thanks to the slide. Second new thing mentioned in the opening, we have a pet, Rush the Dog. In his basic form, the Rush Coil, he will act as a spring for Mega Man to reach hard to get to platforms. And yeah, that's all there is to Rush and the sliding. Cool new features. So, let's get into the bio. Top Man, or DN-021, I'm just going to say DN as a designated number, as in designated number, because we don't actually know who's behind this yet. So, you know, DN. DN-021 Top Man. Being equipped with the auto balance system, he can spin rapidly. Alright, short and sweet. A good point. He's wee greasing. I, I don't know what that is. A bad point. He's not a good storyteller. He likes ice skating, and dislikes bad dancers. This is accentuated pretty well in the Archie comics, once again, because they bring that up in the Archie comics. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Mega Man 3. You know, I didn't know until this playthrough that, um... I mean, again, the Archie comics do a good point of uh, accentuating this plot point, but I didn't know that uh, all these levels took place on different worlds. But apparently they do. These are different mining worlds that... I guess, are not Earth in any way. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Met tools are back. Various different forms. And, oh, here we go. Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat's got two, uh, two attacks. First one's gonna throw those two balls of yarn. Once those balls of yarn are destroyed or they disappear, you're not gonna see it in this one, but spoiler alert, there's another cat coming up later. Something, the cat will do something else, basically, after the balls of yarn are gone. There's a top man enemy. He just throws tops at you. Yeah. Here we go. So, you know, the cat throws his balls of yarn, and as soon as they disappear, boom, fleas. Throws fleas from his back. Not really that much of an issue, because the cat doesn't take that much damage before it dies. So, you know, non-issue. And yeah, we're actually already almost to the end of the level. 
after this top guy, which is a pretty, this is a pretty tricky bit to get through without getting hit, but just uh, stand on the edge and jump over the tops, as you see. And that's pretty much the level now. We just got this one last bit with uh, spinning on tops. And... Boom, we're done. Okay, so let's get into the top man. Once again, like with Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 1, we're going to get into the weaknesses when it becomes more relevant. Specifically when I get the actual powers so I can show off properly what the weaknesses are. Top man, it's pretty easy. It's a good candidate to go after first. Not a difficult level, and he has a very simple pattern that he always sticks to. Basically, he throws his tops. They go at you. You dodge them. He will spin. He is immune completely when he's spinning. And then he will go to the other side of the screen, and he will repeat the process again and again. So spin, throw in the tops, dodge in them, and then he would become immune and spin and go to the other side of the screen. He takes a lot of damage from the Mega Buster, and he has a very simple and predictable pattern that you can very easily get down with. So, you know, there's a, there isn't much to it. Top Man's a very good candidate to go up to first. Although you may not want to, because Top Spin is one of the things I don't like about this game. It's a very... I, I don't like this power. It's a... Um, nah. It's not a great power. It's one of the more terrible powers in the entire Mega Man series, in my honest opinion. What I do like is this theme. This is a pretty great theme. Also, passwords are back for Mega Man 2. We're gonna get into them more in a second. But this Get a Weapon theme is pretty amazing. I love it. All right, before we move on to the next Robot Master, though, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, passwords. So, just like with Mega Man 2, it's a much better theme, though, than the Mega Man 2 password theme. Just like with Mega Man 2, you know, we select password. You can access it from the um, main menu, as you saw. And we just go back and put our dots in. That's that's it, just like with Mega Man 2. We can put an unlimited amount of dots in, so theoretically we can fill up every single space here with a dot. Something different, though, we get red and blue dots. And, yeah. You know, you put your dots down, you press end, if it's the right password, and then you move on to someplace else where that password's relevant, and if not, then you get a password error. Get a password at the end of every single stage, at least with Robot Masters. So, yeah. Moving on to Robot Master number two, Magnet Man. It's a pretty cool level. I like this. Makes, uh, makes decent use of the, uh, the magnet theme, especially here in the beginning with these magnet enemies. You can use them to, uh, bypass some of the platforms. Oh, I get hit there. Oh, well. That's alright. Anyway, let's go on to the bot. What's going on? Oh, hey, who are you? What the hell? Who's this guy? Well, you know, whoever this guy is, he's not that difficult. He, uh, just jumps and shoots, and all you gotta do is jump with him and shoot him back. And that's it. Just uh, do it the way I do it, and he is a non-issue. This is the first time in the Mega Man series that we have many bosses. So, you know, kudos to that guy, which I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to tell you. That guy is only known as Break Man. And we'll get more into Break Man later, because, spoiler alert, he's got a pretty big part in the story. <clears throat> anyway, let's talk about Magnet Man. Designated number 018. Magnet Man is a powerful robot that has magnetic power, as as you'd expect. Though he is a robot, he is addicted to magnetic therapy. I didn't know that was a thing, but alright, sure. A good point. He has good management ability. A bad point. He has a bad sense of direction. Uh, alright. He likes massages, because he the magnetic therapy, and dislikes floppy disks. <laughs> You and everyone else who lives in the year 2015. Except the NSA, apparently. I don't want to get too topical, but that... Yeah. Anyway, reappear and disappear in blocks. They're back. Not that difficult in this game. I kind of mess up a little bit back there, but... Uh, you know. It's not that crazy involved. Like the one at Heat Man stage back in Mega Man 2. And this enemy, I can never, I can never not get hit by that thing. I always have to take a hit in order to move on. And that's it. That is it. We are now at Magnet Man. So, let's do this. Oh, I get hit there by that missile. Doesn't matter, though. Magnet Man's pretty easy. He's another good candidate to go after first, as you'll see. Because Magnet Man, just like Top Man, sticks to a very, very simple pattern. His, he has a variation of it. He has two variations. He either jumps 
and you know tries to pull you in with, with his magnetic energy, or he will jump to one side of the screen and then he will jump up and shoot his magnet missiles at you. So remember, he's either going to try to pull you in, in which case he will be completely immune to all damage, or he's going to jump up and shoot the magnet missiles. But that's it. That's all it's always got. He's immune right now, so I can't actually hit him when he's doing that. And he's done right now. He's very easy. Sticks to a very, very predictable pattern. Again, he has two variations of what he'll do. He'll either try to pull you in with his magnetic energy, in which case he'll be completely, completely immune and you'll just have to run away from him until he's done. Or he'll jump up and shoot three magnet missiles at you. And they home in on you, so, you know. Try to time when you jump and when you slide away from them. But for our efforts, we got the magnet missile! Alright, and a new password. And by the way, I'm going to have this uh, get a weapon theme play after every single Robot Master because... It's a great theme. I love it. Alright. Two down. Six to go. Who's next? Ah, yes. Hard Man. God, why would they call him Hard Man? There are so many better names to call him. Let me read his bio first, and I'll actually get into why, what I think they should have called him. So, designated number 020 Hard Man. He's made of ceramic titanium, and he weighs almost three tons. A good point. He's a hard nut to crack. Can't get a good reading on that guy. And a bad point. He's a lazy bones. He likes sumo wrestling and dislikes swimming. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But honestly, they say he's made of ceramic titanium. Why didn't you just call this guy Titanium Man? I mean, it just... It, uh, whatever, the magnet missile. Here it is in action. Basically, you shoot it, and as soon as it gets in, um, in range of an enemy, it'll home in right on it and hit them for damage. As you just saw with that variation of the Sniper Joe. Because those are Sniper Joes, by the way. They don't have the same uh, appearance that they did before. There's more magnet missile in action. Again, it just shoots straight, but once it's uh, near an enemy, it'll shoot straight up or straight down and hit them for a massive damage. It's a very good weapon. You don't get a lot of use of it. You don't get a lot of uses of it before the weapon energy runs out, but it's a very powerful weapon. Very useful in later stages. Like Shadow Man. Uh, those monkeys are a problem. Don't try to fight them with the Mega Buster. I mean, <laughs> this uh, this little uh, showcase of the monkey it just jumps down. The point of the monkeys, though, if you try to fight them with just the Mega Buster, they are they're gonna jump around and probably hit you for some massive damage. I got really lucky in that little uh, that little take there. So that's not normally what happens. Normally, those monkeys will. You know, jump on you again and again and again and do a lot of damage until you're low on health and, you know, you move around the rest of the stage but you don't have much health and you don't have much magnet missile and... Just take the monkeys out with the magnet missile. You... It'll be better. The screen's pretty cool. The screen takes advantage of, uh, the bees and those, uh, bear trap things. Oh. What? Oh! Breakman's back. Okay. This guy. This is beef with us. Is he the guy that uh, is leading these attacks? Yeah, I guess that one makes sense. Actually, this battle with Breakband is the toughest one because of the uneven terrain. Um, I don't have any good strategies for this. I get away with with uh, this battle with not taking any damage. That's not normally what happens. Normally I take a lot of damage in, uh, in that particular battle with Breakman. But uh, not this time. So... I guess just do what I did, because I don't have a good strategy for that particular terrain. It's very difficult to beat him without taking any damage there. Anyway, Hard Man. This is your textbook definition of a War of Attrition boss. He's going to start by shooting hard knuckles at you, and then he's going to try to do jump up and do the hard press on you. Hard press is going to freeze everything, even if you're in the air, you will be frozen. So just, you know, slide away from where he'll actually press down, because it does massive damage. If you're just getting hit by the hard knuckles and you are constantly hitting him with the Mega Buster, then this battle is very easy because your Mega Buster does more damage to him than the hard knuckle does to you. So you're going to beat him just by pure War of Attrition. And that's it. 
It's because a hard man doesn't really have a that much of an invincibility period. Blood robots have a, a longer invincibility period than hard man, but hard man doesn't. So you can take advantage of that and just war of attrition him to death. And for that, we get the hard knuckle. Should have been the titanium knuckle, but no. Now we uh, it's the hard knuckle. Should have been called Titanium, man. Anyway, we actually had his weakness the whole time. I wasted it on that first playthrough, so you didn't actually get to see it. But, with editing, you'll get to see it right now. His weakness is Magnet Missile. So if you're having a hard time with Hard Man... Ugh. If you're having a hard time with Hard Man, sure it's a tough time, then you can just use Magnet Missile. It does a lot of damage. And he's dead. All right. That's good. Anyway, we got the hard knuckle for being hard man. And that is actually one of Top Man's weaknesses. Although I wouldn't recommend you use it too much on him. See, the thing about hard knuckle is when you shoot it, you can't really do anything. Until it actually hits his mark. You can't, uh, you can't slide. And... That's a problem in this battle, because you won't be able to dodge the tops. The reason you can't slide is because Hard Knuckle has this thing where, um... As soon as you fire it, you can uh, move the control pad up or down, and it'll actually control if the Hard Knuckle goes up or down a little bit. You'll see that more in action when I use it in later parts of the game, but, uh... For now, we're going after Sparkman. And Sparkman is DN023. <clears throat> he is a robot created to charge electricity and can generate twice as high a voltage as a Lekman. Ooh. Take that, a Lekman. And yet he's not as powerful. Not as powerful as the Thunderbeam. Spoiler alert. So, I guess take that, Sparkman. Anyway, a good point. He's friendly. All right, that's nice. A bad point. He's a forgetful robot. All right. He likes electric eels and dislikes loneliness. Oh. I'm going to keep bringing it up in the Archie comics. They, uh, they take advantage of that loneliness thing. And such a... It got to me when I read it. That's, that, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, Sparkman stage. Uh, not that difficult. I'm already halfway through. This halfway point has us uh, falling down a long chasm. And these rocks. Um, just go as quick as you can past these rocks. If you try to stick around and you let the rocks build up too much, you have to shoot them. And if the rocks fall on your head, they do massive damage. So, you know, just get through that part as quick as possible. This bit here at the end takes advantage of... Uh, the Sparkman gimmick of these platforms, and the Needle Man. I mean, no, not Needle Man. Top Man, enemy. Those, uh, those gears that kind of put themselves together. Just uh, use Magnet Missile, or if you've beaten Shadow Man first, then use the Shadow Blade. But you're probably beating Magnet Man first, because Shadow Man's pretty tough, as you'll see later. And uh, just shoot those things, you know, while you're on the safe platforms, and not on those platforms that go up and down, hit you in the spikes. Anyway, Sparkman. He will jump uh, between one to four times, shoot off eight little uh, spark shocks in all eight directions. It's more than eight directions, isn't it? Eight, four, no, I guess it's eight directions. And then he'll shoot one big giant spark beam ball at you, which you can dodge. Be careful of that uh, big spark ball because uh, it has a very deceptively large hitbox. Points where I slide her in and I think I dodge it. I don't. So, be careful with that. Overall, though, he's not that tough. It's a very simple pattern. Wouldn't recommend you go after him first. Because the level is a little bit tricky, especially that end part. If you don't have the proper weapons to make it easier for yourself. But the boss himself isn't really that difficult. Especially if you're going in with full health. He's, he's not much of a hassle. And, yeah. Alright. That takes care of Sparkman, and for our troubles, we get the Spark Shock. It's a pretty basic, but uh, powerful weapon. You see it in action a little bit, because Spark Shock is actually Magnet Man's weakness. So, yeah. 
Alright. Yeah, before we move on to the, ne to the next and last robot master of this part, we're going to take on Magnet Man again and show off just how powerful Spark Shock is. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Spark Shock isn't anything special. It's just you just shoot electricity and that's it. That's all it is. It's neat. And it kills Magnet Man super fast. All right. Last robot master we're going to take on in this part is Shadow Man. Ooh, spooky. Although his stage really doesn't reflect shadow at all. It's a it's a factory of some kind that we're in. Uh, you know, he's a robot, so whatever. It evens out. Plus these are different worlds, so maybe the maybe the world's uninhabitable even for robots, I don't know. Oh. He's back. Round three with the Mysterious Break Man. This battle is easier than the Hard Man battle because, once again, the terrain is straight, so no worries. He's already gone. What is the deal with that guy? He's just getting in there and interrupting our flow. Anyway. Shadow Man, or DN-024. Shadow Man is a robot designed after a Japanese ninja. His Shadow Blade is coated with a special and deadly liquid. A good point. He's flexible. A bad point. He's impulsive. He likes to surprise others and dislikes obvious tricks. Because he's a ninja, you know. He he doesn't like to go with the obvious stuff. He has to go with stuff that uh, really catches you off guard. Those things are pretty crazy. They, um... They're like uh, that bit of Quick Man stage that uh, puts the entire stage in darkness. Except those things um, make holograms of space. I don't know. That, that becomes more relevant later on in another stage. But uh, this last bit, if you've beaten Magnet Man first, then good, because you can just get through these things really, really quick. No pain, no fear. If not, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Those parachute enemies um, do quite a bit of damage, and they don't go down in, you know, one Mega Buster shot, so... If you have Magnet Beam, use Magnet Beam. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Shadow Man. Can you guess what he's weak to? Well, if you didn't guess, we'll get we'll have another chance. For now, though, here he is with just the Mega Buster. He's pretty difficult. He will jump a few times, and then he will either throw his Shadow Blades at you, or he will slide into you. He does a lot of damage. He is very deadly, and I wouldn't recommend you go after him with the Mega Buster. Because you don't do enough damage, and he does way too much to justify you going after him with just the basic weapon. His weakness is top spin. Here's why I don't like top spin. You have to hit him. You have to, like, you know, get in, into actual contact with him in order to make top spin effective. Which means you take damage, which isn't good, especially if you're not going in with full health. You'll probably have to kill yourself and then come back in with full health in order to make top spin effective. And the other thing I liked about top spin... There's no guarantee of how much weapon energy you'll waste. I didn't waste I didn't waste that much with Shadow Man in that battle. But there was a chance that I could have wasted all of it and Shadow Man would still be alive. Which wouldn't be good for me. Because I don't have any E-Tanks. E-Tanks are back in this game, by the way. You probably already saw it, but they're back in this game. But yeah, I don't like top spin. It's too unpredictable. You'll be seeing more examples of top spin's unpredictability later. But for now, we're going to go back and take on Magnet Man because he is also weak, not just to Spark Shock, but to Shadow Blade. And... He's down. Okay. And Spark Man himself is also weak to the Shadow Blade. So do with that information what you will. Hope you enjoyed this first part of Let's Play Mega Man 3, my favorite of the Mega Man games. Next time, we are going to take on the last three Robot Masters on the last three Mining Worlds, get the last three crystals to complete Dr. Light and Dr. Wily's peacekeeping project, Gamma, and maybe find out who the mysterious Breakman is. So, see you then.